don't even remember the first ones. Yeah, hey, remake Roots and have an all white cast. Oh, you do some shit, do that. For real. <laughs> Wow. Have them motherfuckers shit. Uh, wow. Have uh, Brad Pitt play Kuta Kente. You stupid. Uh, <laughs> wow. No, John you Goodman can play Chicken George. And have <laughs> Reese Witherspoon is Kizzy. God damn it. They all got range. They can do it. <laughs> just like when they brought back. Welcome to Homegrown Podcast, Raphael Anthony. Yo, Jamar McClain, you know what it is. We got a special guest in, straight from motherfucking Detroit, Michigan, <laughs> fresh off the plane. This nigga came back with a cold and an STD, visiting family, <laughs> comedian, actor, activist, Ryan Reeves. Hey, you guys, what's up? Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you guys for having me, Homegrown Podcast. Appreciate that. What you do to bring in 2019, Ryan? Shit made money. Oh, you was doing shows out there? No, I was uh, I was actually here for New Year's Eve. I was oh. doing Lyft and Uber. I was thinking oh, made money. Shit. I was being responsible. You so know? you were soliciting your vehicle yeah, and you trying to solicit Postmates. dicks. Soliciting my service. Trying to do some Postmates you know? on us. Postmates? Yeah. Nah, nah. Just Uber Eats, Lyft, and Uber. That's it. Nice, nice. I'm gonna put you on. I'm gonna put you on another one too. Good money, good money. It's called selling cocaine while you doing all that shit. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, get busted. What too. you do, Ralph? What you doing New Year's? I heard I you was, had tickets. I, yeah, I got tickets to the rooftop at the Standard. It was epic. Uh, me and my girl, we were out there. Uh, she was looking fly with this golden like uh, dress, you know, a little glittery one. You wore a tux, or you had that blazer. I had on. this nice blazer. <laughs> I was, you I was pretty fly. She was I, I know you spent a little money. It was a black tie affair, and you wore a black tie. It was pretty. Hot. And then at, after that, around 2 a.m., we went to the BCD Tofu House in L.A. Because that's the only one that's 24 hours. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been there. No. Is that too rich? No. Nope. too much? No, I'm not a fan of Tofu. <laughs> See, I, one was making money, one was spending money. And I was <laughs> yeah, just... I know. What did you, you do for New Year? Uh, I was uh, partying. I had free drinks all night. Went to a, first, I went to one party. I just went for the free drinks and tacos. And then like around 11 o'clock, I went to Iguana's Bar, and I just got fucked up. <laughs> you should have called a Lyft or an Uber because it sounds like he was drinking oh, yeah. and driving. I definitely was drinking and driving. I'm scared as fuck <laughs> on New Year's Eve, all them checkpoint. And this is an opportunity for me to say we do not sponsor uh, drinking and driving. Definitely not. Don't definitely do not, don't do it. Not drinking. Call a Lyft or Uber. Hey, it's bus driving is drunk driving. That he did. <laughs> no, I was That's what fucking, they say. I was driving one eyeball that night. Nigga. I was drunk. Nigga, like for sure. So Ryan, Ryan Reeves comes from Lansing, Michigan. Yeah, I don't know why I keep saying Detroit. He said Flint a minute ago. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's clearly right there written on the wall where I'm from. I want to say, I want to, because Detroit is more known on the map. I didn't want to say Lansing. Nah, you sound okay. like a serial killer. Or, nah, or, everybody knows or, Lansing. Lansing is where like Michigan a, State Spartans play, and that's where Magic Johnson is from. And, damn, and, and okay. me too. So yeah, you so know, you, Lansing, so you Michigan been, on the map, Capital City, baby. So how long you been living in HIV then since you repping Magic? No. <laughs> I say about six years. Oh, that's cold. Cut, All right, real talk. Cut this part. Detroit. <laughs> hey, but no, Detroit is. I heard people from Detroit say it's grimy too. Like people that move out here. Oh, for sure, it's definitely grimy. But and they the, move out here, they be like, shit, it's grimy out here too. It's grimy everywhere you go. But I'm talking about yeah. literally, like, this motherfuckers hate on you out there. Like well, if you have new shoes or something on, like it's like in the '90s how it was out here. It sounds to like out here, but yeah. No, ain't nobody gonna steal your shoes. They got the, if you on, if you on a bus, and motherfuckers be like, "What size you wear?" Like that shit is '90s, bro. <laughs> well, why don't they do that? Might in be for a different reason they ask you why you what size you wear. Out nah, here. Like, size that motherfucker's <laughs> trying to get your shoes. Nah, but what was gonna say? Ryan, Ryan's been doing comedy. How long you been doing stand up? I've been doing stand up eleven years. When's your anniversary of it? Uh, July second. Okay. Some of his clips you might be catching them is on America's Court, VH1, and on Showtime. Hey, but uh, you started in L.A. or you started in Michigan? Very first time I hit the stage to do some stand-up was in Lansing. Uh, I just ended up going to this this little open mic night at this um, local bar on the MSU campus. I saw it was open mic night, so I went in there, asked the dudes if I could go up there and do some jokes. He said, yeah. I didn't write any jokes, so I was You freaked out? No, I just... Are you? Oh, what you do the, best? You stole jokes from I Red Fox. I ain't stealing no jokes. Hey, you did really some. Trust. I bet you did at least one joke somebody else's. You had to. Uh, that's all I did. I, I just kind of. I just wanted to go up there and see how I felt with the mic. And, but I did you do other people's jokes though? Yes yeah, or no? I didn't, I didn't have no jokes. <laughs> I, I knew just, it. I just wanted to go up there. What else was I supposed to do? I knew <laughs> so it. Right, the cool. first. Hey, that's a that's the first cootie. He be biting motherfucker. Your first ever. 
Because that's you don't never want to do something the first time, and you feel like you have to do it all the time. That's why I never got fucked up when I, I, I first you started. Did not do- listen to the story? I wasn't planning <laughs> to do it. I, I didn't write no jokes. I wasn't a comedian. But yet. I'm saying, so what I'm made like, you right, go, go up there? And, what and, made you go up do it? Just because you was like, I'm gonna do it. I just it. wanted to. I've yeah. always, I've always been intrigued by the the art of telling jokes and uh, writing them and stuff like that. So I was like, let me go up there and see if I can do it like how he d- he does it. I who jokes? Who good. jokes did you do? It was Red Fox. Jokes. I knew it. This <laughs> I was listening to his tape, so I did the, my three favorite jokes, and I got some laughs. You did it like right. you switched it around and make it sound like it was yours, or you just did word for word. Uh, I didn't try to you know imitate him or nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, you I, just I did your own style. Know, tell it like I, I figured I knew where to pause yeah. and all that kind of stuff. There's a like, huge. Right. There's a huge difference between plagiarism yeah. and then bringing material that's like that's homegrown. Funny. So to the when I first did stand up, no, I fucking that, wrote a set. I wrote jokes did. when I first first did it. That's what I did too. So what I did my first set at the comedy club that we had the amateur night, I wrote my own jokes and I did that. So I was like, how, right, how cool. much time did you do at the amateur night? Five minutes. And the first time you ever did, how much time did you do? Three minutes or five? I'd that, say about maybe three minutes. No, and then, you got and only and three at the comedy club, I did five. That shit is a high, huh? You did good? It was good? cool. I, yeah, I, I did okay. I did okay. Is, I still got it on tape, too. What does your tape. audience know you for? Like, when you come on stage, what do they expect from you? Besides the hack. They don't never expect no hacking material from me, so don't, hey. don't get that in your head. I wish this nigga would stop. He's asking your bullshit. style of comedy. What are they, what are they expecting? I don't know. Uh, I guess a lot of people say I, I kind of talk fast, so I guess you know, rapid jokes, rapid laughs. I guess. No, nah, but like, who can you like compare Cat yourself? Williams? Compare yourself with somebody that's famous. I've Andy heard. Murphy. I've heard people say that I remind them of Cat Williams. I don't know how. I don't change my voice when I go on stage. Uh, I've heard. Uh, who else did they say? Somebody, somebody fast, like Rodney Dangerfield. Like I, I like Rodney Dangerfield. I love that. But he do one liners though. One-liners. He don't yeah, do, he but don't I mean, one. just like how his jokes are just like you know, bam, bam, back bam, to back, yeah, yeah. back yeah. to back. So I, I, I like how Ryan is presenting himself. The way you're showing it is like this is you are trying to deliver it in this fashion. It's like, yeah. Don't compare me. This is just like my influence. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like to be compared to anybody. You know, but but if you go compare me to somebody, at least compare me to the people that I actually like. Respect. But not, not. <laughs> Saying I don't like them, but you know the people that I look up to. Like I look up to Red Fox. Some people say that I remind him of fucking Mike Epps. Mike Epps, Mike Epps is funny, but he yeah, like yeah, he funny. He's like hood funny, but he's not. He's not like uh, funny is funny. No, nah, I'm talking about he, makes he has his own laugh. following. He has his own crowd. <laughs> they say hood funny. Yeah, he can do yeah, those same. He knows what jokes to do in front of white people. But I'm he's just, still hood. Like and you know that, it's crazy. Still funny. You know it's crazy. Yeah, he don't change up for a white no. crowd. But you know it's funny. The what? first time I ever went to a stand up show was Mike Epps. And he had Dominique open it for him. They have, they both had me crying laughing. Where was that at? At the Irvine Improv back in like 06. This is like my first comedy club comedy show. Really? First time I went to a comedy like show. Like a live show. That was my yeah. first time. I saw Cat Williams live. At the Your first time at the ever going to a comedy show was Cat Williams. Not very first, but the first time out here, like what I paid for to like go Like a see? big show? Cat Williams. And he was actually had you laughing? Yeah. It, but it was we were still, you weren't doing comedy, comedy yet though, huh? Nope. See, that's yeah, the whole point. When, when, man, once you start doing do stand up, you don't look at it the same nah, when you I see don't. performers. That shit crazy, right? Not yeah. that our humor get washed away, but it's just not the same. Like, yeah. we compare ourselves to whoever mm-hmm. we're watching. And we're like, man, I could do that too. Like, that's how actors, you know, real actors, I've watched movies and, you know, they watch other actors. Everybody could always tell you 10 different ways that they would have did this scene or that scene. Yeah, yeah they can't look at directors it. Directors and shit. Yeah. So, yeah Speaking of movies, true. what's your uh, favorite uh, movie out of all time? You better not say The Godfather. Hell no, I don't. I don't have. I can't say just one. All right, what's movie the top ever. five favorite movies of all time that you can always watch? Any given Sunday. That's a great movie. Shout Friday. out to Jamie Foxx, L. O. Cool J. Bill Bellamy, Friday, yeah. Robert uh, De Niro. I mean Robert Al Pacino. <laughs> I said Robert De Niro. You said Friday the first one. I mean, these are just like five that I could just repeatedly watch in my head as of right now. Collateral. Any, any given Sunday. Which one's Collateral? Jamie Foxx and Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. Shout out to 58 Bar and Pico Rivera. They filmed the scene there, the nightclub scene. Uh, what else can I watch over and over? Um, this is what's so cool about Ryan. He's a movie buff. It's random, yeah, though. Yeah. Those movies, movies he named is random as fuck. Like, here, they're something. not even critically acclaimed. No, <laughs> they just, I'm, I'm they're like his like favorite movies. movies. I've watched a lot lately. Uh, no, nah, Any Given Sunday is dope. And it's like still don't have his due like as far as sports, sports movie. Nobody yeah, say Any um, Given Sunday. Mm, I'm trying to think of the posters I have on my wall. What about funny movies, though, like a comedy? 
Are you Besides a romantic Friday. comedy or just comedy? No, nah, I, don't, I don't really care for romantic comedies. And I, I hate I, how they always try to throw I'm, romance and action movies. I, I'm a Fuck sap. Me. I love it. No, because a story I'm always had to have a love yeah, interest. Yeah, like, <laughs> a story let's always had to have a love in that building. Shit. <laughs> What's the movie um, you show me? What's the movie you show me that it was a fucking, uh, it was a, a chick like a transgender. She was going around killing people at camp. What was that shit called again? You said, "Oh yeah, yep. sleepaway camp." <laughs> we did watch hey. that shit. She was all, hey. "This motherfucker is a horror." I, I know that. you like horror movies, Hell but this, yeah. hey, this movie was like in the eighties. And it was just random, like, then they put somebody dick in a cheese grater or something? Something what? like that. Dude no. plugged in a uh, curling iron and oh, stuck yeah, it inside the chick. Stuck it inside a pussy. Horrible. I, I, and it's horrible. This. That's how he movie. killed her. <laughs> and this was in the 80s. You know, the, uh, the seat, like, they didn't have good graphics back then, yeah. but that shit was, like, random. And then at the end of the movie, it's a bitch, and she just shows her dick. So it's basically a dude that turned into a female. Yeah, so shout out to Sleepaway Camp for all those nightmares you gave me, you motherfuckers. Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> so uh, the Ryan, dick scene gave you nightmares. It could have yeah, that was that was creepy. Creepy, that was so I want to ask him a question about how do you feel about the Hollywood trying to replicate previous movies and bring them oh, up to speed? Well, I'm glad you asked whack. me that question. I whack. hate that. I think it's lazy as hell. Some remakes are cool. Uh, a lot of movies that they don't remake, they should, like Back to the Future. The Last Dragon. I think I'm going to be in it. I think I'm going to be in that motherfucker. I'm either going to be... like showing up. No, fuck. Nigga, I'm going to be Leroy, nigga. Leroy? They ain't going to be fucking showing up, motherfucker. ain't going to be no Leroy. I'm going to be the main lead, nigga. I'm fucking... I'm smashing Vanity. You know, Vanity too old to be in it. Ghostbusters. That shit was horrible. Yeah, they That remake was horrible. And then they not only try to... Not because it was females. It wasn't because it was females. It was just a horrible it was just horrible but they do fuck it up by trying to just remake movies but oh we'll change the gender like how they did with the Oceans movies and yeah. how they're gonna do with the, uh, the Terminator 3 movie it, and not, they're not only doing that they're going back to being lazy as hell they're changing the timeline yeah like yeah. how so, the new Halloween was a new part 2 the new Terminator is gonna be the new I, I could've Terminator sworn I could've, Halloween was alright I could've I sworn Jamie like, Lee I, like I could've it. sworn it's Jamie Lee Curtis too. character died then you're like in the first one yeah nah she was alive <laughs> in the part, part 2 she was, yeah. Remakes is always stupid, though, as far as uh, if it's like if they took too long to remake them. Because sometimes the generations don't even remember the first ones. Yeah, remake Roots, but have an all white cast. Oh, you want to do oh, some shit, real, do that. For real. Wow. <laughs> have them motherfuckers. Shit. Uh, have uh, Brad Pitt play Kuta Kente. You stupid. Uh, <laughs> wow. John remake. Goodman can play Chicken George and have <laughs> Reese Witherspoon as Kizzy. God damn it. They all got range. They can do it. Or, or just like when they brought back. Uh, bitch Thank ass. What's her name? Roseanne, nigga. They brought back Roseanne, and Dan died, nigga. In the, the last one, yeah, like, he literally he? he had a heart attack. Yeah, he died off. How how'd they, kill, how'd they kill off Roseanne? Uh, they said she died from pain, opioids. from pain uh, prescriptions or painkillers. Yeah, overdose of opioids. That's supposed. And to then be. John Goodman just died. No, John Goodman died in the original one, and then for oh, the, the first one, and then they brought him back. They brought him back when Roseanne made the comeback. Like this so was that his twin brother that died instead of him. He got cloned. <laughs> hey, it's a new it's a new Keanu Reeves movie coming out called uh, Replica. Where I saw that. You that saw the trailer. Good. You saw yeah. the movie. I saw that. That shit look crazy, huh? That shit look good. All right, so his family dies, and he gets and, a clone, and he's like a scientist, and he fucking recreates them, mm-hmm. and then they don't even know that they died. Mm-mm. And it's also creepy shit though too. It turned into like a horror though, or like a sci-fi thriller type shit. It looks good, kind of so, like uh, us. So in your career in comedy, you've been doing it for eleven years. Did mm-hmm. you ever feel that you had to like change? Because of your audience, or do you ever, were always confident in your material? Or it's other people's material that you're doing. <laughs> I, nigga, stop, stop. He's not hacky, y'all. Just uh, Google it. See for yourself. <laughs> uh, what do you, what do Every you mean? comedian involved. Like, I, yeah, you're like, talking for about, sure you You're evolved, talking about certain jokes you don't do no more, or you feel like you're going to be more clean in the future, or you only do like, ra- like, like raunchy shit, raw, blue material, which is basically... Cussing, talking about more sex. Comfortable doing dirty jokes. Everybody know. do because it's easier. Why. Well, well, you don't always have to cuss or you know be nah. graphic. With what you mean? Show. Like if you do a show for a church, you can't do half of your material. You're gonna have three minutes. They're gonna stay. Like when they I, want you to do only I, clean. I actually did a clean show a couple months ago. I did like maybe 15, 20 minutes. I was nah, proud I of myself. I can do a clean show. Oh, I, I can do a clean. But the whole point <laughs> is you gotta have a clean set. But he's yeah. talking about evolving as far as have you changed your your. Uh, your approach to comedy, not just your your jokes, but uh, one, a lot of times you do got to reinvent shit. You got to get back. One thing I wish I would do a little bit more of is actually talking about myself and my personal life, like how a lot of comics do. I, I haven't oh. really got to that point. When you find your voice is what they say. I haven't even found my voice yet. No, I don't think. It takes a long people, time. You know, when people ask you, oh, what's your sense of humor? 
Like, what, what do you say when, when people I'll tell my you folks, that? come to my show. You're yeah, going to see. Like, I'm funny. I tell jokes. Every come day to my show. I don't do political jokes, and I don't talk about religion. Yeah, I kind of say that. That's what thing. I say. But, but I as far as you're finding your voices when you could talk, the, uh, if you go on stage and then you go off, you sound like you're the same person. It's not an act. It doesn't sound like it's a, like you, you know what I'm trying to say? Like Dave Chappelle, you can't tell if he's doing material. He fucking worked out or he's up there just talking. Well, I yeah. think, I think. And he's making people laugh. Like people's voices, like, do you talk about like. No, nah, it ain't what you're talking about. No, I'm talking about literally, it don't matter Your what the. Voice scena- voice? No, the scenario, that. the scenario, it could be no matter what, you're still the same. And, and, and uh, is it like motherfuckers heckling? It's a lot of distractions. It could be a calm room or it could be like. Nigga, the person before you did horrible, the crowd is loud, and you're still the same. You're not changing for nothing. Stay, same you way. Never feel you have to change. And, and then you get off stage and you're the same. Like, you don't ch- That's finding your voice. Like, you're the same on stage and off stage. Yeah. Hmm. That's why I feel. That's why I feel like it is. It's not like an act no more. It's like you literally go up there and you just fucking do your shit. Like, who are you and what do you talk about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, it's some know. people. It's some comedians don't say, don't talk about no personal shit. They keep that shit like they keep a balance. They don't even talk about none of their family, no kids. Where other comedians, that's all they talk about. Yeah, Do you true. ever feel yourself people... competing against the media right now, which is like Vine comedy, Snapchat comedy, Instagram <laughs> comedy memes? There ain't no competition. Them motherfuckers yeah, is weird. Yeah, they got it. That's a whole other lane, though. So, you know, it's, it's different because a lot of those funny guys can't, can't go on stage and, and they do can't what we go, do. They can't go on stage and do 45 minutes, mm, 30 I agree. minutes. There's a big difference between performance art, which is comedy. It really Stand is up. a performance. Yeah, and it's sketch an comedy. It's entertainment element mm-hmm. and sketch comedy, which is like five seconds, seven Well, not seconds, just like Vine, punchline. but in general, like the sketch comedy could be, it's it's it could be manipulated. Because yeah. you could do it over and over until you get the right take. You edit it and you make it where it's funny, where it, Stand up comedy, you are vulnerable as fuck. You only Just got one you, chance. Right at the moment. <laughs> right, Timing. Now, right now, the media keeps blaming millennials because it's an easy cop out in regards of what they're not doing and what they are doing. Like millennials, millennials are killing this industry or whatever. It's technology, you, bro. Do you feel that maybe yeah, this generation is not going, is not allowing themselves to see what is comedy? In a show and performance, because you see an older crowd nowadays. I well, now it's just crowds anymore. Now it's just uh, you got to wear. You got, I, think, I think you got to wear a lot of hats. But it's the internet changer where you could bring your shit in front of more mass people. Yep. They don't have to come to the show to see. How, how do you promote to the younger crowd? I mean, we're talking to twenty-year-olds. You know, thirty-year-olds. Pull his dick out and just perform. <laughs> That's all he did. And, and then I get arrested after that. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. You know who this motherfucker is, one of his oh. influencers? Because we asked who your comedic influence is. I know it's Bill Cosby because you be popping pills, motherfucker. Don't be popping pills. <laughs> <fucking pill. laughs> who's one of your comedic influences? Like Red Fox. No, nah, but other ones. Red Fox is a little older generation. Like You sound like you're an old soul by saying Red Fox because it's the younger people that's listening. They don't even know who Red Fox is. Uh, I like... Well, George Collins, old school. I like Mike Epps. Uh, like that, that influenced you to make you like, man, I want to do stand up. Like Martin, the Martin or uh, yeah, Chris Tucker. Shit, I used to love watching Def Comedy Jam. I used to. Hey, for real. That would be yeah. my Friday night watching Def Comedy Jam. No matter what I did, that was my Friday night. Well, see, like he was, li- all, all he was living in luxury out of Michigan, had HBO back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so he was watching through his neighbor's windows and shit. <laughs> And then I go to school. My parents didn't even let me watch that shit when I was little. My friends would ask ask me to reenact my favorite jokes from uh, the shit that I saw on Friday. Oh, Which one? On oh, Def Comedy Jam? Mm-hmm. Which joke really, like, if you reenacted, you knew they were the they were gonna laugh at? It. The physical ones, like the ones the, you could the do. Ones that I really you could do funny. act outs. Yeah, it, I, I, and I don't do act outs on stage. Do you? Yes, no, kind of, no, no I, I do. Walk out back. I do a lot of act outs. I just gotta just stand there. I don't, I don't, Mario I don't do a lot. Hey, I just kind of, you know, stand or maybe I, I walk a certain way, but I, I'm not very physical on stage. What you think about uh, what you call it, Tiffany Haddish? You heard about her bombing on New Year's Eve? It happens. No, but nigga, she got seventy racks to bomb. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah. Me and you, we getting chicken wings and weed yeah, to bomb. Yeah, like, baby, we gotta pay for that if we bomb. She got seventy racks, bro. That night I heard. Uh, and she and she ended up like forgetting her material, and she ended up bringing people on stage to do shit like. Just she to, should have took that show a little bit more seriously, I guess maybe. But then, I think she know, wasn't. She, I think she was partying the night before. She just was. She was tired. She and wasn't that prepared. night too. Yeah, she said she was up to seven in the morning. Miami, the clubs don't close. So she was like, <laughs> and it's New Year's Eve weekend or like the week prior to it. Yeah, and then again, people just love. But everybody try to make everybody. Fail. No, everybody hate on Tiffany saying that she uh, she did a Showtime hour. She had an hour special. But everybody's saying she didn't put in work where she's not like a, a headliner, headliner where she could do an hour and thirty minutes on stage. Like she got like speed track. You know what I'm saying to where she at now. 
Well, that could be true. They say the same thing about Gerard Carmichael. Uh, but that nigga got two HBO specials, though. Yeah, they say he wasn't ready for his first <laughs> You know, because everybody talk about how nobody was laughing and shit. Yeah, but it's different now because it's supposed to be alternative comedy. He's not going for laughs all the way. That's what I'll, I think Gerard's more of a... But, com- he's more of a writer's comic, too, I though. I bet she's ready like a motherfucker. Her, her, <laughs> her, her, her next show, show in Vegas. Yeah, so it's at the Vegas. Mirage. So in which a couple was weeks. Your, uh, or the Venetian one of them. Which mm-hmm. was your worst heckler? No, nah, fuck heckler. What's your worst show that ever happened? Worst experience, like... Where it was just bad, like motherfuckers try to punch you after her. Oh shit. Like a bad show, like bad experience, bad set. It made you just want to get up and leave without getting paid. Like I just gotta get the fuck out of here. Worst show I can think of was this time that I drove all the way out to Victorville. Nigga, that's not far, bro. Well, it was, it was, I had been doing comedy less than six months. You went out there. Far to me. You went out there for four people in the audience. It was it was packed. Oh, and you bomb. It was a hood show, no, nah, but it it wasn't set up for comedy. It was me. Skills and uh, Nate Jackson. Who was hosting? Nate? Yeah. And it was just like loud? It was it was older people. It was loud. Everybody was partying and dancing. They had the music. <laughs> so it was basically all these people drunk, drinking, have a, have and a they good wasn't time. Fucking you got to shut com- the music down and tell them, hey, sit down and be quiet. We're about to have a comedy show. Yeah, oh they fucked up. These people, they weren't ready for that. Everybody was yelling and yeah, it, it was a horrible <laughs> show. It was bad. Everybody was really did bad. bad? Everybody did bad. Well, everybody did. I didn't do so good because I, I had just started, but it was just a bad show. It was a set. The setup wasn't it right. It was bad, and we had to stand in the middle, and everybody's just yelling and stuff. <laughs> I just, yeah, it was bad. It sucked. You guys had sucked. you guys had a PA system and a mic, or y'all was just like we had a microphone, but it, it wasn't fucking with them people and their loud ass voices. The White Beverly had a show uh, last month, and Pico's on Echoes on Pico or whatever. The show, it's like Rock House from Comedy Union, mm. and then I get there, and it's like the same thing. Sherwin was hosting. So I'm like, yeah, it gets loud as fuck. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Like, this shit is a pep rally. Like, <laughs> is it a pep? <laughs> hey, hey, real talk. Hey, but look at like, and That's then funny. and then Sherman, because I was running late. I was supposed to be up on stage when I got there, and he's like, you're next. When Sharon got on stage, I'm like, fuck, nigga, this is like a setup. Yeah. But as soon as I get up there, I end up getting the crowd. I end up doing good, but Yo, it was still people heckling. Like, but isn't that the worst? Like, That's as soon as you get there, you gotta up. go right up on stage. That's the worst. I'm like, let me at least get a beer, nigga. Let me relax. <laughs> Yo, do you remember when he was doing that show at the Regal Inn? Yeah, yeah, that was a bar Man, show. That's you, different. You stand at the stage. He saw me walking up from the parking lot. Before I could even cross the door line, he's introducing me to the stage. He's like, nigga, I can't even... Nothing? I'm like, all right, fine. Then I went up on Those stage. type of shows make you stronger, though, the bar so, shows. Yeah, I'm not complaining. It was, it was always I mean, fun. That was just immediate. Just so <laughs> straight I, from the car to the stage. So have you had the chance to travel within the states of California or other states? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I travel a lot. So when you've traveled on and you've done your headline shows, have you ever felt like you have to change your material depending on the audience? Fuck or you no. always stayed the same? Uh, the only places I felt like I kind of had to change my material was when I went to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Okay. And, uh, you got a passport, I see? Seattle. But at the okay. same time, we're, we're, our job is to read the audience. We're supposed to know. Yeah. We don't really have to change. It's just more, you're supposed to know the audience. You're Vancouver, supposed to read the Vancouver, audience. Vancouver, they're sensitive as hell. They like PC, <laughs> PC yeah, crowd. Very, very, and you know, you probably they, fuck some snow bunnies not, up there, huh? No, nah, but and, at least pay for one. You probably, probably, probably pay for a prostitute up there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard the pussy's cheaper. It was any <laughs> prostitutes. That's how a lot of homeless people. I was surprised. That's crazy, and it's cold as fuck up there. Yeah, the downtown the looks just like our downtown, but a little bit cleaner. He talking about scare row, or he talking about just how shitty it looks? I would say both. Because downtown LA is nice in some areas, but it's pretty shitty. I'm bro. talking about the shitty parts. Yeah, like Scare Row. But it, it wasn't. I'm gonna fuck like Gotham. Look like the bad part of Gotham City, though. <laughs> <laughs> shit is not good. So, Man, you don't want to get out of your car. It's, it's just, uh, Something smash. that's underlying <laughs> about comedians is that comedians shouldn't be apologizing for their observations because there's always an. Nah, it's not that. It's true. So the Kevin Hart situation, he made jokes on Twitter about. And he apologized. It, it was homophobic. It was homophobic material, but. But that same shit he said in his comedy special, so it was just like he was joking. And yeah, then, that's, my, that's my point. And then once he, should not be technically you um, apologizing for the work. And then once he ended up getting the host job, they it backlashed on him, and then uh, fucking um, it backlashed on him where they're bringing up old tweets, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, you hiring a homophobic motherfucker? This motherfucker been on already, like just because he got a, a bigger prestige job." But what, what's your? And he didn't want to apologize. I'm like, he already apologized. So like everybody's saying he didn't apologize. He already did. He just backed away from the job because he didn't want the controversy. I would have still took that shit until they fired me. That's how I would look at it. 
You know, he, he thought he he wanted to to you know take the first step, step down instead of getting fired. But at the same time, it wasn't guaranteed he was gonna get fired. He was on some shit like he like nah. But he's I, like he probably like y'all tripping off that. I was like you know what, fuck it, I don't even want to do it. Because he said I changed. I was yeah, like eight like, years it, ago. It's different. So why, why are you bringing this up? It's obvious they tried to you know what? do something by bringing the old. You shit got up. you got some tweets out there that you would get fired for, or if you get a good job that'll come back and hunt you. Hmm. I don't think so. I don't even tweet that much. You should use it. Bro. Well, it's a good. It's the, a good medium. I feel that that comedians, yeah, a comedians, is the voice of a perspective that the full audience is not aware of. So they, it really allows a dialogue to initiate, be initiated, because if a comedian shares an observation, it will be either shocking or in a way to be able to be positive or negative. But it's just to initiate a dialogue. It shouldn't be where someone needs to be apologizing and saying, "Oh, sorry about that. That's a topic we shouldn't cover." No, that's not true. Joan Rivers was one of the best comedians who said comedians should not be apologizing. And she was an insult because comedy. of the intent <laughs> oh, yeah. behind she was it. Funny too. It's what's the intent behind it? So what's I, his name? D.L. Higley said, "Fuck that." He told him, he's like, "I'm happy Kevin didn't apologize." D.L. Higley was like that too. He ain't like, "I ain't apologizing for shit." Because well, meant, we're meant to make people laugh. Let me give you a perspective. For example. Maybe if a comedian is like in the heat of the moment and they make a comment that. You know, just like off the cuff, I'm like, kind of, damn, I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I can understand and apologize. That's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's nah. so different. Like, you know what? I shouldn't have said that, but you know what? Instead of just being like, oh, everybody's mad at me for saying that. Oh, well, let me apologize. Like, if you feel you need to apologize because you didn't mean to say what you said, then that's a sincere apology. But if you're apologizing because this group gets mad, then that's that's kissing ass. There you go. There's, that's my ass. point. That's it really ass. is behind the intent behind it. Here's can't, something. You can't here's please a, everybody. And motherfuckers are sensitive as shit these days, and I hate that. Well, here's an argument that I want to share with you. I want to get your opinion <laughs> on. Uh, if you consider Twitter being, uh, or Instagram, or any social media aspect of being like, oh my God, people are offended by it. You have to remember that these are individuals that don't necessarily go to a comedy show. Yes, yeah, you know what I'm saying. There's a small well, percentage. It's people that get fired. Of these bro. people that get upset. It's people that get fired from the jobs off of what they tweet. It's yeah, crazy. because criticism has Shit, always Roseanne. existed. It's exactly. Just, it's just what I'm talking about. 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 Regular folk too, though. The white bitch that said that Ob- uh, Michelle Obama looked like a monkey. That bitch got fired. Like just shit, like yo. The if you say that racist, people shit. come up with for the shit. The reason why they say this. Oh, I was on Ambien when I wrote those racist tweets. Like, bitch. <laughs> the Ambien. side effects are not racist tweets <laughs> to make you racist. Yeah, nah, it's I, the fuck out of here. Yeah, it. just you it's know, keep that shit real. I love that. It's no, nah, it's it's some shit out there where uh, you shouldn't be. If you put it out there, you put it out there. You shouldn't be like if you get a job, you go looking back. Cause once once you get on, this motherfuckers already finding that shit. They quick on like yeah. the internet. Mm-hmm. Try to delete tweet. This actual app or like a website to see where people are deleting tweets. You're, really? Yes. You're a movie buff. Uh, who's the director of uh, Gal- uh, Galleons of the Galaxy and also the whole um, James Gunn? Yeah. The so shit that he fuck? got in trouble with. He got in trouble for that. But what did he get in trouble for? Homophobic shit or racist shit? So maybe oh, ten, nine, seven <laughs> years ago, within seven <laughs> or ten years ago, he was tweeting just jokes, like one-liner jokes about uh, intention of pedophilia. But not oh, really. Oh yeah, yeah. That's it, what it, was. it wasn't like saying have sex with a young girl. No, or Kelly, like, Kelly's like, what? <laughs> yeah. So he put his ear up to the tube. <laughs> but it was enough for the joke to Stupid. just be delivered as a punchline. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it was enough to get him in trouble. He's an idiot though. But consider this: know. Disney is making a big deal out of it when they hired comedians like Robin Williams. What are you talking about, Disney? Have you heard Disney of... owns uh, fi- uh, Marvel. Yes, they Disney own. own. Yes, they do. I didn't know they own Marvel. Yeah, they do. Yeah, now they do. Yeah, so if they're causing an argument about his comedy, look at look at the past decades when Robin Williams. Some of his stuff was dark. But yet he was the the you know the the voice of uh, the genie. Speaking of that, we're yeah. ma- speaking of the remake. You know they making a fucking new Aladdin. And Will oh, Smith playing God. the Saw genie. That shit. Will Smith playing the genie because he wasn't blue in the picture. <laughs> shit. No, fuck, fuck blue. Here. Nigga, no, that nigga no. need to be Middle Eastern or fucking <laughs> Ara- Arabic. Nigga, like he need to be Arabic. Well, this nigga black with a Philly accent. <laughs> that shit crazy. Robin Williams was white. Nah, but Rob Williams had an accent at he least. Was he was the doing... voice of. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't know what he sounds like, do we? No, nah, but I'm sure he's going to have a fucking stupid accent, though. He's not going to sound like Will Smith. I just know it's stupid. You expect the friends like, oh, I expect for this G. I can't do it, man. Like, a, li- a live version of Aladdin sounds whack enough, but to have Will Smith as a Latin, like, what the fuck? Hey, they may blow my mind, though. They'll do something, I'm sure. 
So if you know. if you had a movie to remake, which movie would you think? And you better put me in it. And you better put me in it, motherfucker. A movie that you want to be in that you wish it could be remade. We just said it. Last Dragon. He gonna be playing. Last Dragon. He gonna play the uh, little the little brother. The little brother. Alvin. What's the name? Hey, put me down. Anything you say. He hit his head on that gas. Tank. Hey, have been in the trash you know my in the favorite first part place. is that nigga. Now when he or he got thrown in the spaghetti. And he started talking shit, man. You ain't nothing, like. Yeah. I, but when they tied him up, and then nigga start pop locking the gate. Yeah, get up out of there. <laughs> hey, he was really moving. Yo, they came up hey, and destroyed his, hey, his family. I'm not like, lying, nigga. I just nothing. looked at that shit on Netflix last night. That's right. the reason why I brought it up. Nigga. Remember the part showing up, kick the machine, dude. Was like, hey, man, I don't know that. <laughs> So, what do you think? Like, why the fuck you don't own it? It's in your restaurant. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that song they were singing was horrible. But, Eddie, you're all wet. <laughs> I'm going to kill that bitch. <laughs> so, uh, Classic movie. Is, hey, they need to remake that shit. Real yeah. talk. So, all right, I want to make sure we don't miss out. So, what shows do you have coming up? What do you have going on? Uh, well, the very next show that I have is this Thursday over in Jamario's spot at the Penthouse Lounge. Popping, popping, come poppin', through, poppin', La- yeah. ladies' night, turn up comedy. Come through, shall be fun. It's gonna be my first time there. Hear a lot of good stuff about the place. And uh, anything after that, just follow me on my social media. That's your first show in a year in 2019. Mm, yep. And on yeah. social media, it's Instagram at Ryan Reeves Comedy. Yeah, That's all Reeves. one word. E A V E S. Yeah, R E A V E S. Yeah, <laughs> you motherfuckers be like, like Christopher, I'm like you dumbass. There's no S at the end of his name, and it's E E still. Rest, so. rest in peace, Superman, the original. Yeah, yeah shout out, shout out to sure. uh, Christopher Reeve and George Reeves. See, George Reeves, he had the S at the end of his name, but I'm the only one with the E A. So yeah. And uh, this is a great opportunity for us to talk about our sponsors. Yo, y'all make sure y'all check out our sponsors, man. First of all, we're sponsored by Cultural Alliance of Long Beach. Shout out C-A-L-B. And also? Uh, we also have uh, uh, Arts, Music, and Culture, which uh, definitely is an organization to promote and curate and music exhibitions. Follow us on Instagram. You can follow them on Instagram at Art, Music, and Culture. Uh, Cultural Alliance of Long Beach is a nonprofit organization dedicated to showcasing artists and creative types within the community here and Long Beach, which is really awesome. And uh, another thing, we're gonna give a shout out to the people on YouTube. Don't forget to please subscribe, uh, comment, and like. Uh, for our last uh, YouTube video that we did, we wanna give a shout out to Edward Chavez. He said, I like the show, it's a great show, you guys. So thank you so much for the shout out and uh, keep uh, commenting, so we really appreciate it. And make sure y'all subscribe to Home Homegrown Podcast and you, might, you wanna, uh, we're going to give our shirts starting next month or next week? Next week. Next week. Any, any subscribers on the anchor.fm uh, forward slash homegrown podcast are going to get a free shirt if you subscribe to our podcast. More details on that on our next show. And subscribe to my YouTube channel too, Ryan Reeves Comedy. Yeah. So thank you so much, Ryan Reeves, for coming up to Thanks us. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate us it. And uh, definitely coming out and sharing your opinion. We That's what we do. We try to promote the talent that's within our, our city or here in Long Beach and in L.A. Cool, thank you. So thank you. And uh, come see me at a show. Find out my shit ain't hacky like this fool was talking about. It's <laughs> just a little bit hacky. He changes the words around. Oh, you, ca- you catch me tomorrow night. This is on that motherfucking January. What's today? The 7th? January 8th. <laughs> at the Sycamore Tavern, the Dojo Comedy in Hollywood, and then Thursday night at the Penthouse Lounge. And then on the 22nd at the Hollywood Improv. Make sure you come in and support live comedy also. Because laughter is the best medicine. So for Homegrown Podcast, Raphael Anthony, <laughs> Jamari McClain. Cheers. <laughs>